Hey, what's going on? Shane at Shane Hubbard Fit and the Simple 60 Challenge. Today, I'm going to teach you exercises that can help you get better at push-ups. So other than not having ideal upper body strength, another thing that typically gets overlooked is core strength and core stability. So I'm going to teach you a couple of exercises that you can do waiting in line at the grocery store, as well as some actual movements that mimic the push-up that are gonna help you get better at doing push-ups. So the first thing to practice doing is bracing your core. So exercise number one is bracing your core. So you can just do this while you're watching this video. You're going to squeeze your stomach muscles, squeeze your butt muscles, hold for up to five seconds or three to five seconds, and then relax, and then repeat. Treat this like any other exercise. Contract, hold, and then relax. Contract, hold, and then relax. So practice bracing whenever you can. When, you know, again, if you're waiting in line at the grocery store or just hanging around, right? You can practice this motion. And then when you get into the next couple exercises I'm gonna show you, you will already be ready for doing that. And while you're doing them, you should also be thinking, am I bracing my core? Am I squeezing my butt muscles? All right, so the second exercise that can help you get better at push-ups is just doing a straight arm plank. I'm gonna to cut to a video right now that shows you what I'm talking about. And a couple of things you wanna make sure in terms of body position is that your wrists or your palm is right underneath your elbow, which is right underneath your shoulder. So you wanna have a straight up and down line from your wrist all the way up to your shoulder. You don't want your, sh your wrists to be too far in front of you. You want your wrist to be just underneath your shoulders. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but you wanna make sure that you're not too far in front. Another big problem that I see with plank positions, especially straight arm planks, is that the hips are sagging, all right? You might not even know it because your core is not engaged, but when you engage your core, that should line you up so that your head, your shoulders, your hips, and your heels are all in a straight line, all right? So if I was to draw a line from my head all the way to my heels, it would be relatively straight. Now, if you have a big butt, it's probably going to make this look a little off, so don't worry too much about that, but the idea is, is that virtually a straight line from your head to your heels. Another thing you might notice if you record yourself doing this position to check your form is that if your hips are sort of, if you sort of have this like low back arch, right? You can fix that by again, engaging your core, squeezing those core muscles, squeezing those butt muscles will put you in a very strong position to hold that plank. And what I want you to do is when you're in that straight arm plank position, I want you to, to grab your phone or grab a stopwatch and see how long you can hold it before you can't hold it anymore. Stop the timer when you're done, see how long you can hold it, and each time you practice this exercise, try to hold three to five seconds longer. Eventually, you'll get up to a point to where you can hold it for an entire minute, and if you can hold a straight arm plank position for a minute, you can definitely do a push-up. All right, the third exercise that I want you to practice is scapular retractions. Now you can practice this motion by just standing up as well, all right? You could do it with a band. There's a, a popular exercise called band pull-aparts. I pretty much recommend it to every single client that I write a program for because it teaches you how to get better at, at retracting your scapula, okay? So I'm gonna cut to a video that shows you what I'm talking about, but essentially what I mean is, is being able to move your scapula independent of what else you're doing with the push-up. A big problem that I see with push-ups is that you don't actually retract the scapula, all right? A lot of people, what is happening is, is their shoulders are actually going up to your ears. So when you're in this position and you're practicing uh, scapular retractions, what I want you to do is I want you to push your shoulders down towards your hips, okay? And I want you to squeeze your armpits. And then what I want you to do is I want you just to think about your shoulder blades, so your scapula, moving towards each other, all right? So you're moving towards each other and then you're coming back to the starting position and then they're moving towards each other, and then you're coming back to the starting position. And what you'll notice is, is that there's just a slight little movement, right? This is the beginning of a push-up position. If you don't get this right, you're gonna be weak from the start. Just like if you don't brace your core, you're not gonna have as much power and strength as you could have if you actually braced your core, all right? So remember those two things when you're doing these retractions. Press your shoulders down towards your hips, squeeze your armpits into your ribs, and then retract that scapula. All right, the fourth exercise that I want you to practice is eccentric push-ups. All right, eccentric is just a scientific word for the downward motion of an exercise. So like for the push-up, as your chest gets closer and closer to the ground, that's the eccentric motion. And typically speaking, this is where a lot of you are weak. All right, so if you improve this first, when you actually do the pressing part of the push-up or the concentric portion of the push-up, you'll be a lot, lot stronger. And by practicing the eccentric, by the way, you actually improve the concentric motion. So just going down very slow. Now, what I recommend you do when you're doing eccentric push-ups is count to three, all right? 
count to three and rest your chest on the ground and then get yourself back up. Don't try to do a push up from the ground up. Just get back up. You can even push your hips back, get back into that straight arm plank position and then slowly lower yourself down into that eccentric push up position. Do a couple of these, you know, every single day if you can, you know, do up to five, take a break, do another five, you know, and just keep practicing it. So the reason why this is super important is because the eccentric portion of the push-up helps strengthen everything else with the push-up as well. All right, the fifth exercise that I want you to practice for getting better at push-ups is partial range of motion. And no, I don't mean going down halfway and stopping and looking ridiculous. What I mean is, is that you're going to set up some sort of barrier. In the video I'm gonna swipe to in a second, I wanna show you how I do this with pillows in my house. So what I essentially do is I, I stack a couple of pillows, however high I need it to go, and that is my stopping point, as if it was the ground, right? And I'm gonna lower myself until my chest hits those pillars or whatever I'm using as my, as my marker, and then I'm gonna come back up. This can improve a couple of different things. Typically during a push-up, there's a sticking point towards the middle or lower portion of the push-up. So if you can improve by you know, getting that sticking position and actually doing a full push-up or full partial range of motion push-up with a marker, you're gonna get better at those sticking points. Now, when you practice your push-up without the markers, like a pillow or whatever you're using, you still need to go all the way to the ground. So it's not a full push-up just because you're practicing the partial. It's just a little technique to help get better at those sticking points as you're doing push-ups. Final exercise I want you to do to help you get better at push-ups is bench or couch push-ups. So anytime you raise the elevation where your hands are, so like for instance, let's say that I put my hands on the bench. I'm gonna show you a video in a second that has me doing this exercise. If you put your hands on the bench, your hands are elevated. So hand elevated push-ups can help because the amount of weight that you're actually having to do the push-up with is lower, all right? You're not doing your entire body weight, you're only doing a partial amount of your body weight. So this can help you get really, uh, can empower you and get better at doing that position of the push-up so that eventually you can lower your hands closer and closer to the ground until you can do a push-up from the ground, all right? So the, this is something that you can typically do earlier on, like what I usually do with my clients is I practice eccentric push-ups from the ground and then I also practice el hand elevated push-ups on a bar or a bench or if you're at home you can do it on your couch provided it's you know high enough for you to be able to actually do the push-ups and that's a very important uh, way to get better at push-ups. All right so those are six exercises that can help you improve your push-up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to check out the video I made on push-up form so making sure that your form is right when you're doing a push-up so that you don't practice doing bad push-ups and then get to the point where you can do really good bad push-ups, right? So anyway, make sure you check out that video as well. Thanks a ton for watching this video. If you want more help, don't forget to subscribe, like this video, comment if you have any questions on some of these exercises, and I will see you in a future video.